Hi, and welcome to our discussion of titration curves as part of our conversation on acid-base chemistry at the AP and IBHL level. We are currently working on our last point on our titration curve. We are now past the equivalence point. Here's our dilution up at the top. If you're having trouble with that, remember to come see me so I can help you. Now, we're going to move that dilution step feeds into the before, 0 0.0571, 0 0.0857, and you will notice we now have excess strong base. All right, so it's our propanoic acid that is now our limiting and it's going to drive our pH, okay? So I'm gonna set up a little bit, 571. So it's our strong base that's going to drive our pH. Yes, we do have some weak base present, and that weak base is going to contribute a teeny, 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 tiny amount of hydroxide. So our strong base contribute so much more hydroxide than the equilibrium that we could set up from this that we're going to neglect this altogether. So instead, we're going to get our pOH directly from this value right here. And so pH will be equal to minus the log of our 0.0286 and that's going to give us a pOH, excuse me, pOH equal to 1.544, and a pH, and that's what's critical, our pH equal to 12.456, completely driven by that excess strong base. Okay, so now what I want to do, you might have to go back in your notes and take a look at that titration curve. I want to have a conversation about that. Uh, this is your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Uh, it's just a derivation of a Ka expression. And I forgot I wanted to mention something about that, so let me briefly mention that. If you notice that you have both your conjugate base and some of the weak acid, okay? So here's the constraints here. You can skip the rice and plug right into Henderson-Hasselbalch. So this would be the acid version. This would be the base version. And if you wanna play around with that, you can feel free to do that. I don't spend a lot of time on that. It's a little helpful, but it doesn't save a lot of time to be honest with you. Okay, I like it a lot with buffers, and so in the buffer videos, you'll see henderson Hasselbach a little more. Okay, so here is our titration curve, and on our titration curve, we have pH, and along the bottom, we have our volume of base that we were adding. In our calculation, we found that our equivalence point was at 20 milliliters. Whoops. Okay, and our half equivalence point, somewhere right in here on this drawing, would be around right here at 10 milliliters. And that half equivalence point is critical because at that point, my concentration of acid, I'm just gonna call it HA and A minus, just for simplified notation. So my acid at that point was equal to my conjugate and my pH was equal to my pKa. So that's really important to see. At the beginning, all I had was my acid. Between the beginning and my half equivalence point, I'll tell you, some people confuse the half equivalence point with the equivalence point. pH equals pKa at the half equivalence point. Okay, so now if we go along here between the beginning and the 
half equivalence point, it is my protonated form that dominates the deprotonated or unprotonated form. Okay? Now, after that half equivalence point, we'll see, and we saw from the calculations, go back up and look at that data point. Look at the one that was at 15 milliliters, and you see that now the deprotonated form dominates because at the equivalence point, right there at the equivalence point, all we have is our weak conjugate base. And because all we have is a weak conjugate base, that's, that defines the pH there, and that pH was 8.855. So this pH was 8.855. You can define the strength of your acid by the pH at the equivalence point. Because it's basic, that proves we must have had a weak acid being titrated by our strong base. Now this beginning point here, you can't use that point to unequivocally define it as a weak acid because that point depends on not only the strength of our acid or base, but also our molarity of our acid and base. So you have to be a little careful. If you were trying to prove whether this was weak or strong, you can't really use that first data point. Uh, you can compare, assuming, say, molarity, a weaker acid would have a higher pH at this starting point. But if they're not the same molarity, you can't really define whether it's a strong acid or st uh, weak acid there. Okay? Now, up here, we have two primary species. We have the weak conjugate base, and we have our excess hydroxide present. Okay, if we had any spectator ions, so in this case, it might have been potassium hydroxide, or in our case, it was sodium hydroxide. So certainly our spectator ions are still present and we don't want to forget about those. So, we got one more video, and in those videos I want to compare strengths a little bit more detail and see the shapes of the curves. So I hope you're able to join me as we qualitatively discuss a variety of titration curves. So until then, this is signing off.